O Lord, through the parable of the grain of wheat, you taught us to die to ourselves, that we might bear abundant fruit. You gave us the living example of Sharba. Grant us an awareness of our faults and sins, so that during this life we may be changed through prayer and good works. Then may we deserve to enjoy your heavenly garden forever and ever. Baruch Morish Kohnei Assalam Lilbiya wa Lebaniha. teaches us by the example of his life and blesses the church of the hermit saints and martyrs the holy spirit dwells in the church and renews her in every time and place your christ to your father in your life-giving spirit to glory honor and power now and forever oh God, oh adorable and mysterious trinity lies love and acts in the silence of times your great mysteries have been accomplished blessed is the one who quiets everything within himself and listen to the empathic voice which leads to you Sharbel heard this voice and clothed him in solitude. He separated himself from a self-seeking world and spoke with you. You taught him to deny himself and to die like a grain of wheat. You asked him to bind himself to you in a life of poverty, chastity, and obedience. Freed from himself, he discovered you, O Lord, and embraced the way of the cross, and filled his spirit with the memory of your son's passion and death. The holy mysteries became his life, he caressed his real food, and the mother of God his consolation. Day and night he thought you in the scripture and the lives of the saints 
through unending prayers, his whole life became a living hymn of praise to you, an ending in a sacrifice love that continues to proclaim your glory. We beseech you through his intercession to inspire us to a life of prayers and sacrifice. Help us to live lives of quiet dedication to the service of your church now and forever. Father, accept our incense as a guide against this mysterial, mysterialistic world to flow, follow the example of Shabra, so that we may embrace your cross, O Lord, which is the promise of salvation and the bridge to eternal life. We shall praise you now and forever. Kadishat aloha, Kadishat hayuto no Kadishat lo moyuto. Itraha. Kadishat aloha, Kadishat. Hail to no Kadishat lo moyuto Itraha Kadishat aloha Kadishat Hail to no Kadishat lo moyuto Itraha Ayuha Rabul Kudus Aladhi La Yamut Qaddis Afkarana Wa Naqida Mayirina Fanu Sabiha Katasbihan Naqiyan Wa Nuski La Kutubika Al Muqaddasa La Kal Majdu Ila Labad Reading from the Act of the Apostles. Glory to the Lord God of Paul and the Apostles. May he bless the reader, the hearer, the city, and its inhabitants now and forever.
Brothers and sisters, now those who were scattered because of the persecution that took place over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyrus, and Antioch. And they spoke the word to no one except Jews. But among them were some men from Cyprus and Cyrene, who on coming to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists also, proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number became believers and turned to the Lord. News of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast devotion. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for an entire year they met with the church and taught a great many people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. At that time, prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them, named Agabus, stood up and predicted by the Spirit that there would be a severe famine over all the world. And this took place during the reign of Claudius. The disciples determined that according to their ability, each would send relief to the believers living in Judea. This they did, sending it to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. Praise be to God always. Peace be with you. Let us be attentive to the gospel of life and salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ, as recorded by the Apostle Matthew. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord Jesus says, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. 
Now when Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and proclaim his message in their cities. This is the truth, Hakan Walaman Ulijamiako. Bishop Robert, my brother priests, Order of Charbel, members of NAM, choir, people of God, and I noticed even some, some young people. I, not as many as I wanted. Next, to, tomorrow we hope to see more. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. As it was said earlier today, happy birthday. Fourth of July. <laughs> happy birthday to the United States of America. By the way, if you get bored with the homily, there's priests in the back hearing your confessions, so <laughs> choose whichever you prefer. <laughs> Bishop Shaheen, brothers and sisters, the gospel today talks about hospitality. In every parish that has hosted the NAM Convention, I think that's the very clear desire to make you and me feel we're at home. But there are two ways to do it. We could run around, run around, and fail to even look in the eyes of those that we welcome. Or we can do everything we can and give them a generous welcome. And the difference is very important, not so much for conventions, but I think every, every convention, especially Los Angeles, has taken the time to look in our eyes and tell us welcome. But it, there's a difference when it comes to welcoming the Word of God in our lives. We can just read it, and it's over, and nothing happens within our soul. That's not a welcome. That's just what we do by rote memory and by ritual, and nothing happens within us. I don't know if you noticed in the uh, epistle today from the Acts of the Apostles, where were Christians named Christians for the first time? Antioch. I knew that since I was young. But I didn't know a couple other things. And by reading carefully that reading, I learned. You know, Barnabas was sent to them. And then when he, would, when he didn't find Saul, whose name became Paul, he went to where to find him? Tarsus. And he brought him to Antioch. And what did they do in Antioch? For an entire year, they taught and preached and baptized and encouraged. And it was after that year that the, the, uh, the Luke, Luke the, the physician, the writer of the Acts of the Apostles and the Gospel of Luke, he says, after their year, Antioch, they were called Christians for the first time. It took them a whole year to understand what it means to be disciples of Jesus Christ. We take it for granted when we're baptized, we're Christians, and we never bothered to learn anything past eighth grade. But look what they took, look how they took the time to come to know and understand their faith. And there's something else that happened. 
in this process of becoming Christians, they noticed there was someone else that needed something. The church in Jerusalem. There was a prophecy that there was going to be a famine. And so they began gathering alms. And it was decided that Barnabas and Paul would take that offering to the church in Jerusalem. Much like we gather our love and our sentiments and our monetary gifts to help those brothers and sisters of the Middle East and Lebanon who need our assistance. This is how we welcome the word. It becomes part of us. And it changes us. Bishop Shaheen yesterday told the young adults, don't be afraid to stand out. Don't be afraid to be old-fashioned. Don't be afraid to be a little bit different. To hold on to that which you were given by your grandparents and make it alive so it doesn't stop with you. I remember as a little child reading the story of the North American martyrs. Do you remember Father Jock Marquette? I remember my third grade reader. And I was inspired by the fact that this man went from France to evangelize the Native Americans. And then it was killed in the line of duty. And I was so impressed that the gospel of Jesus was so important to him that he laid down his life. And then I remember Father Berkmeyer, who would visit our home. We didn't know anything about the Maronite Church until I was 18. And I remember the respect that my mother and father held him in. And then I remember the first day that we learned that there is a new church starting, a Maronite Church. What is Maronite? And so we began to go. And from that, we could see our lives gathered around the priest and gathered around our cousins and our community and welcoming non Middle Eastern people, forging a community that loved Christ and that made a difference. That's what we do. That's what these priests do. That's what we do as the apostolate of Nam. We welcome. But in order to do that, we must also welcome the troubles, the hardships the losses, the disappointments, the broken promises, our own failings. And when we welcome that into our own soul, then we begin to welcome the grace of God to help us through those times. That's when we realize the great gift of confession and the great gift of the sacraments and the great gift of the church. Yes, brothers and sisters, welcoming is an important part of our spirituality. He who welcomes you welcomes me, and he who welcomes me welcomes the Heavenly Father who sent me, Jesus said. Let us these days not just be here for occasions of social activities, but let us come to Christ in the Blessed Sacrament. Let us come. This, is, this church is set up day and night for us to come and spend a couple minutes of quiet. Let us come so that we can become accustomed to welcoming Jesus Christ, King of glory, crucified Lord, lover of mankind. Welcome him into the little stable of our hearts that we too can become Bethlehem. It's time we were going to take a minute to, before the creed, to welcome new members of the Order of Charbel. The Order is those members who want to make a generous donation, not of their money, of their time, their efforts, their love, for priests, retired priests, seminarians. And so I'd ask for the seminarians to come up on the right here, stand here, and the Order of Charbel, if you would kindly uh, prepare yourself, and the new members, if you would come forward, and Bishop Shaheen and I will install. And the president of the Order of Sharba, Beverly, come. And the chaplain, uh, Monsignor Joe. Your Excellency, I am pleased to present the following people who wish to become a member of the Order of St. Charbel, of the Eparchy of St. Marin of Brooklyn, as well as the Eparchy of Our Lady of Lebanon. After due consideration, I ask that their names be inscribed among those dedicated to the service of our church as members of this order 
whose purpose is the education of our seminarians.